These drawstring bags make the perfect reusable gift wrapping and you can use fun fabrics to fit the occasion. Welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable. We are getting into the holiday season with our first dedicated sew along. I really wanted to focus on fast, easy projects geared towards beginners. This tutorial is a little different than my other drawstring bag video. The construction process is very simple and features a contrasting fabric for the casing. If you purchase the Ready to Sew Holiday Kit, you have materials to make two bags, one with the Christmas bows print and white lining, and the other with a light pink garland with geometric triangles lining. If not, no worries, you just have to cut up some fabric from your own stash. I'll be showing how to make two versions, a flat bag and another with boxed corners. Here's what you need. Two main fabric and two lining pieces cut to eight by eight inch squares, two casing pieces, eight and a half by two and a half inches, and half inch twill tape or ribbon, about 48 inches per bag. Starting out with the flat version, the quickest and easiest option. Place the two main fabrics right sides together. Pin or clip three sides, leaving the top edge open. I've been loving extra fine magic pins. They don't leave holes in my fabric and feel comfortable in my hand. These and other supplies featured in this video are available in the Sewing Report Etsy shop. Do the same for the lining pieces, but mark about three inches in the center of the bottom edge for turning later. You won't be sewing this section, and having a visual reminder really helps. The majority of this project will be sewn with a quarter inch seam allowance. Here are the settings on the Brother CS7000i sewing machine. I'm on stitch zero, with a 2.5 stitch length and needle position at 3.0. If you line up the edge of your fabric with the inner metal guide on the walking foot, it produces a quarter inch seam. Stitch down the side, bottom, and other side of the main fabrics. Backstitch at all of the start and stopping points. At each corner, you'll want to leave the needle down in the fabric. Lift the presser foot, pivot the fabric 90 degrees, drop the presser foot, and keep sewing. Repeat with the lining, but don't forget to leave that opening at the bottom. If you're here and don't know anything about sewing, I encourage you to watch my Learn to Sew series featuring the Brother CS7000i to nail down the basics particularly the video about basic stitches. Trim the bottom corners like this with scissors, but don't accidentally cut through the stitch lines. Here's how I press the seams open. Laying out flat, I take a mini iron and use the tip to separate the seam allowance. Then I flip each piece over and repeat on the other side. Turn the main bag piece right side out and gently poke out the corners. I use a wooden chopstick I got with the takeout order. Leave the bag lining inside out for now. Alternatively, you can make another version with boxed out corners. It's a few more steps, but has a three dimensional shape. Lay out the pieces and determine which sides will be the bottom. Using a clear quilting ruler, I love creative grids by the way, mark one inch squares on the two bottom corners. Carefully cut these sections out on the main and lining fabric. Pin both pieces right sides together. Now once again you will be sewing the sides and bottom, except for the cutout corners and the gap in the lining. Don't forget to backstitch at all of the start and stopping points. Yes, it's extra work, but it will prevent your stitches from popping out. We're back at the ironing station and you can see I've pressed the seams open already. And here's a closer look at where the stitches are on these pieces. Pinch the corners to create the boxed portion. You'll want to try and line up the seam lines on both sides as best you can. Instead of using pins, I glue basted the opening by running a thin line of glue right near the raw edge and pressed it with a dry iron. This secured the fabric until it was sewn down permanently. I find this method produces more accurate placement, sew using a quarter inch seam allowance and back stitching at both ends. Here's the boxed out corner, and you can see how well all the seam lines all match up. Turn this bag piece right side out. Now we'll be continuing on with the construction of the bag, which applies to both versions. Moving on to the casing, 
flip the pieces wrong side up and on the short ends, fold and press in a quarter inch. The Clover Hot Roller is a great tool for this step. Fold and press in another half inch. You can glue baste the folded edges down, eliminating the need for pins. We're going to edge stitch along the inner fold on the wrong side of the fabric. I mostly kept my sewing machine settings the same, but lengthened the stitch to 3.0, and lined up the edge of the fabric with the outer metal guide on the walking foot. It worked out so the seam allowance was a bit under a half inch, which was perfect since the fold itself is a half inch. Fold the casing pieces in half on the long side with the wrong sides together. Press and glue baste the raw edges of the long side. With the main fabric bag piece right side out, center the casings along the top side. Raw edges should meet up and there should be about a half inch of space on either side. Glue baste the casing to the main fabric. I like to start out in the middle and work my way out. Flip the piece over and repeat on the other side. Ideally, the casings should line up with each other. Insert the main fabric into the lining. Right sides of the fabric should be together at this point. It'll be a bit of a tight fit, but you can do it. Match up the side seams with the seam allowance open. If you pin right next to the seam on either side, you'll get a neater finish. After that, I'll pin in the center, then the midpoint in between. The casing pieces should be tucked inside. You'll probably want to use your sewing machine's free arm function to sew all around the top of the bag with a quarter inch seam allowance. When you get to the starting point, overlap the stitches about an inch, and that will lock them in place. Remember that opening in the lining? Start pulling out the main piece carefully through that opening. Turn the entire project right side out. Tuck in the raw edges of the opening and press. I'm busting out the glue once more. Work smarter, not harder. Back at the sewing machine, edge stitch that section closed. Back stitching at the beginning and end. You'll probably want to use a thread that blends into whatever your lining fabric is. Tuck the lining into the bag and it's important to press each sewing project. For this one, I pressed at the top seam inside, outside, and misted the fabric with the spray bottle to get out the wrinkles from turning. We're almost done. Just have to insert the string as in drawstring. This plastic bobbin holder made a fantastic tool for getting the twill tape through the casing. With the tape almost threaded through the bobbin holder like a needle, insert it into the channel and run through both casings, coming out the same opening. Try not to get it twisted up inside as you want it to be flat. Leave some slack on both ends of the tape and clip the excess off. With the two ends together, tie a knot. Repeat with the second piece of twill tape, but start running it through the opposite side. That's how the drawstrings actually function. Mm -hmm. 
Make a clean cut on the ends of the tape. Because cotton twill tends to fray, I applied some fray check to the ends and let it dry. Now you have an adorable lined drawstring bag. Because I did not use pre-washed fabric, if you do want to launder these, I'd advise gently hand washing, then air drying, avoiding the washer and dryer. This is just the first of the holiday sew along videos. In the next one, we'll be making a giant scrunchie, which is also part of the kit offered in the sewing report Etsy shop. You can find the link to buy one down below in the description box. It features the Figo Fabrics Peppermint Collection, a really cute Christmas-themed line by designer Dana Willard. The kit includes already cut out pieces to make two drawstring bags, the giant scrunchie, extra supplies, and a fat quarter bundle of the three peppermint prints. There are a limited number of holiday sewing kits available for shipping in the U.S. When they're gone, they're gone. Come join me for some Christmas cheer and let's get sewing. Stay tuned for more Sew Along videos. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I'm Jen with The Sewing Report, and remember, whatever you're doing, make it fun.